Have you ever wondered how God could use you as an artist if you're creating work that's not overtly Christian or overtly spiritual? Lots of Christian artists struggle with that. And I'm going to tackle that question today here on 5-Minute Mentoring. Have you ever wanted to have someone in your life who you could ask real questions about your art, your business, and even your walk with the Lord? Well, that's exactly what we do every Friday here on 5-Minute Mentoring, where I answer one question from one of my awesome podcast listeners in order to help you start really thriving as the artist you know God created you to be. Well, hey there, my friend. I'm so glad that you're with me today on 5-Minute Mentoring. Listen, if there is one question that I've gotten over the years a ton, <laughs> it is it is this struggle that a lot of Christian artists have with uh, creating art that they love and that they feel fulfilled with, but is not overtly Christian. And oh my gosh, I think because of so many, uh, so much of the religious baggage that people carry uh, of what being a Christian is supposed to look like, what being an artist is supposed to look like, it just really becomes a paralyzing and frustrating factor in their life. Well, one of my listeners, Debbie from Scotland, is struggling with that, and she left me a question today on our website. Here's Debbie's question. Hello, I'm Debbie from Scotland. I'm an author of fiction for both adults and children, but it's not specifically Christian. I just love creating story. But my question is, how can God use me? I doubt myself sometimes that what I'm doing is valid because my stories are not clearly religious or Christian and wouldn't lead somebody to God. And yet when I'm in the flow, I feel so content and fulfilled. So that's my question. How can God use me? Well, thanks, Debbie, for that question. You know, a lot of artists all over the world, no matter what creative medium they might be in, they really struggle with this because, you know, you want to honor the Lord with what you're doing. And at the same time, you wonder, is what I'm doing making a difference? You know, I used to struggle with this, especially as I came into the world of both being a Christian and being an artist. Um, It's been a little different for me because what I did um, for so many years and still do is create woven sculptures. So never nobody ever asked me, Matt, are are you creating Christian baskets? (laughs) Which is which is kind of great. But when it gets into you know narrative, story, uh, music, uh, direct you know overt imagery. A lot of times people struggle with this even more. But here's what I've come down to. And as I've shared this over the years, both in the mentoring program and at conferences and in books, it really seems to resonate um, with people. And so I always say this, you know, I believe that God cares more that you create than what you create. Now, what does that mean? Well, for me, that means that it's more important for me as an artist to recognize and embrace the unique design that God's got on my life and fulfill that design to the best of my ability um, and not give as much thought to trying to do things that are overtly Christian. I deal with this a lot when we talk about prophetic art. You know, you may have heard other episodes here on the on the podcast where we've talked about that, you know, because a, a one real paralyzing factor for artists who want to create what many call prophetic art, that is, art that God is moving through is that they get so tied up and frustrated trying to figure out is what I'm creating, you know, prophetic or not? Is this God enough or not? That it totally shuts them down. And listen, my best advice for artists all the time is get in your studio, invite the Holy Spirit into that space, begin to cultivate an atmosphere of his presence in your life on an ongoing basis and do the thing that's on your heart to do. (laughs) Because listen, when you fulfill God's design for your life, you know that you're coming into alignment with his best purpose and plan for you. And that that plan connects with what other people are doing in the kingdom. And together, we make a huge impact. The other thing I would say is that you've got to, in that place, trust that God is at work in the middle of it. See, so much of so many well-meaning people that have focused everything that we're supposed to do in our life from a Christian perspective on on evangelism have completely uh, marginalized this idea that we are supposed to be living the abundant life that God (laughs) sent Jesus to redeem us in order to be able to experience, and that as we live that abundant life of joy and beauty and peace and creativity 
and love, we are literally through our lives prophesying to the world and to others the new reality of the kingdom that is both now and is yet to come. For others to see your life as an artist creating, uh, making a living from your art or doing it as ministry, living a life that is fulfilled and happy and joyful. Friend, let me tell you something. That says volumes to people. You can't always think of, of life and especially life as an artist as transactional. You know, that is, I did this and this happened. I did that and that happened. No, we're living life and we're trusting God along the way. And here's the beautiful thing. The results are up to God. My job and your job as artists is to be the best artist that we can be. Be what I call filled and skilled, filled with the power of the light and life of God, filled with his presence, cultivating an atmosphere of his presence, inviting heaven into earth and everything that we're doing on a daily basis. And at the same time, enlarging our capacities, our honing our skills to be everything that God's called us to be and leaving the results up to God. That's the beautiful thing that when we do that, all of a sudden our life and our art and everything about us can take on such incredible impact that is beyond anything that we could have engineered ourselves. So listen, if you're struggling with that today, like Debbie, and Debbie, I hope that in, encourages you. Listen, I just want to encourage you, get in the studio, create what you love, <laughs> write those fictional stories, Debbie, do the thing that God's put on your heart to do, love people, cultivate his presence, and trust that as you're faithful to the thing God's called you to, you're faithful to the unique design he's designed in your life and the investment he's put in you. Know that God is going to use you beyond your wildest, wildest dreams. All right. So Debbie, thanks a lot for your question. And listen, if you're out there and you're like, oh my gosh, I'd love to ask Matt a question. All you got to do, go to matttommymentoring.com forward slash podcast. You can click on uh, the speak pipe message button right there and leave me a voicemail specifically for the podcast. And um, I go through those every week and pick out questions just like this. It would be a big encouragement for our audience. All right. Well, listen, thanks for being on today. And remember, until next time, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.